more than uh, taking your hand. First part of these, these messages and the teachings, I, I, I literally took your hand and walked you through it, yes. if you were willing. But I think he wants me to just sprinkle you, just speak out of surplus, so that we can receive it as we can hear it. And I can just allow the increase to come from the Father. I mean, no, he's the Lord of the harvest anyway. Amen. That's what the word says. Amen. So I'm going to believe that. Okay, we, we first started off, we were talking on, uh, of course, the title is Our Future is Prophetic. Then we, segue, we made a segue talking about how we're not a nursery, we're not a reformatory. What's the next thing? Not a Pentecostal playground. Or an old folks home. Or old folks home. Mm -hmm. Amen. And we're moving towards uh, a kingdom embassy. In order for us to become a kingdom in an embassy, we have to recognize that the king's domain is in us. Amen? He's not somewhere on space. He's, he's in this space. He's in this place. He's in our hearts. Am I right? And it's very important that we understand that he wants to rule in our affairs. Most of us is waiting on the climax and the culmination of the ages before we allow him to rule. But he wants to rule now. If faith is now, mm -hmm. he wants to rule when? Yeah. Now, not later. If you don't, because if he don't rule now, he ain't going to rule later. And you won't get the results, the fruits, the benefits of him setting up his government on the inside of us. We are a kingdom embassy. The scepter of righteousness has to be established in our hearts first. If God's going to bring society, our communities, our families under the auspices of his government, it begins with us. We are the first fruit to whatever God wants to do in our family. I don't know if we believe it, but I'm here to tell you. I don't care how long they've been saved. I don't care what they know. You are the first fruit to what God is going to do to your family. He may not do it in your generation, but you are the earnest of what God wants to do in your bloodline. Amen. If you see what you see, don't worry about it. It may be dark, but I'm here to tell you, I believe this deep down in my soul. Yesterday, he began to show me things in my spirit. And I'm telling you this morning, I may not see the culmination. I may not see the fullness, the climax, the totality of what God is doing in me. But I know, for I'm so persuaded, I'm convinced that I am a, a, a prototype <laughs> of what God wants to do. To my family, yeah, yeah. to my bloodline, to my yeah. generation. Yeah. And as a kingdom embassy, we got to understand it as such. Therefore, there are some rules of engagement, some uh, procedures that are involved. Mm -hmm. This is why we talked about we got to hear the call. Mm -hmm. We got to hear the call. We got to respond to God. We talked about the call. It's an invitation to stand in places we never stood before. Mm -hmm. The word Khalil. And, and the Greek means we've got an invitation to stand. It's a, it's a VIP from the Holy Spirit. To stand in places, stand in positions, stand in demeanors and, and different things like that that we've never stood before. Even in our family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is an invocation of the Holy Spirit. We've got to accept it as such. We need the call. And we got to understand some of us is a call, some of us are going to be corn. Mm. He's, most of us, if you're not called, if he's, you're called, but if you're not responding, you're going to be cornered. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. How you get there is up to you. Yeah. <laughs> it's up to you. You can be called or cornered. See that word? Khalil, to call, allow. The other root is to hail or insight by word or command or order. That's what Rudy and the prophet was doing. The other Rudy and the prophet was doing was commanding an order. He's urging us on. There's an urgency in our spirit. It's not a casual thing. It's about, not by half a chance. We've got to understand by the Spirit of God, there's a cadence coming from out of the throne of God, preparing us to respond, not only in our generation, but generations to come. And this calling don't have any regards for any uh, uh, training, teaching, education, acumen, acuities, and all that other stuff. You don't have to be the brightest, because we went to 1 Corinthians and found out that he took the foolish things. Yeah. He took the base things. He yeah. took the things that are not. Yeah. 
You're the black sheep of the family. All of a sudden, God wants to change you. Not when you can use your promotion to bring everybody under service to you. Come on. Your promotion, your elevation to the things of God is to serve them. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Not for you to walk around in arrogance and haughtiness. Mm -hmm. Thinking because you're the first one who got exposed to a certain level of revelation and teaching. <laughs> you are here to put the towel on and serve your family, serve your community, serve your society, the, the circle, the sphere of influence that you're in. It's not for us to put it in our tent. It's not for us to hide it. It's to be dispersed. Remember we talked about it. It has to be dispersed. The things that are in this house, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding in this house has to be dispersed abroad. Yes. And you can tell the telltale, the, the telltale sign of a dispersal or the correct use of any type of of resources of the kingdom is by multiplication, by evangelism, mm -hmm. by word of mouth. People come, they follow you. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So we get stagnant in our church trying to figure out why nobody coming because you ain't changed. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong? Yeah. 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 They, they, once they find out, they ever discover the appointment that God has on your life, Trust me, you won't be able to keep them away. But our vocation can't be enough. Our vocabulary, our vernacular, our wisdom cannot be enough. God wants to do something other than just call us. He wants to touch us. We need to be what? Touch. Remember I walked you through it, through the Bible. I just gave you a quick Bible lesson. Am I right? I told you that everybody of significance in scriptures had something by touch. God wants to touch us. You can sit underneath the word and never be touched. You can join the church and never be touched. You can hear prophetic words and never be touched. You need to be touched. God normally, he normally don't touch us among people. Because the touch that God wants to afford us to experience is intimate. That's why you have to get on the backside of the desert. That's why you got to spend time with the Holy Spirit. That's why you got to spend time with God. It's okay. Isolation it could be education. It's all right for God to put a desire in you to get on your face. Amen. Well, we need a touch from God. Because the touch from God is aching to impartations. That's, we need impartations. We need an impartation from God. We do. Just think about all the people in the Bible. I know some of you guys are students of the scriptures. Just think about everybody of significance that did anything of importance. They, were, they had something. They had a moniker. They had a mark. Like, like Paul said, I bear my body the mark of the Lord Jesus. That's, that's the impartation. We need the impartation of God. We need something that we carry continuously to remind us what the Lord has done. That's what I'm talking about when I say a touch. Something that you can know without a shadow of God of doubt, and nobody can take it from you. And you don't need interpretation. You don't have to take it to nobody. You just know that was God. You don't need no miserable comforters. Bill, Dad, so far, and all those guys over there, remember? With Joe? They were trying to interpret this experience. See, he was being touched by God. But he was touched by God, Job, I'm talking about. Job was touched by God because he was haughty. Mm -hmm. He did everything right, but he was haughty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go to the third, third chapter, you see it? He was haughty. As perfect as he was before God, as upright, one who eschewed evil, but yet he was still haughty because he was dependent on his duties as a signature to God that he was right. Amen? So we have things in us that are haughty, that are proud, that are arrogant, self-sufficient. We try to figure out why I don't feel close to God. You're closer to God than you've ever been. You just have, you're not aware yet. There's no proximity. How can you be in Him and He be distant? How can you be joined to the Lord as one spirit and be distant? We got to remove those impediments. We got to re those uh, false signals that come from the carnal mind, so we can be touched by God. Because when you get touched by God, you change, you transform. 
and you go towards the direction of the touch. Yes. You, you don't stay in one place. No, we need to be touched. Yes. That touch will produce a passion in you. And out of that passion will come your purpose. And the fulfillment of that purpose is fruitfulness. Am I right? We need it. When you go beyond your natural limitations, where there's a release for you to operate in everything that God has for you, even when your strength is not strong, you don't just give up. That's when you've been touched by God. You make a mistake and you pick yourself up and say, I can do this. Because before I failed, before I went through failure, before I had any morality issues, I was touched by God already. And I know I can go back to the center. I can return to the center. He's the all that finished with my faith. I can start over again. Yes. This was my learning curve. Yes. Amen. Yes. I'm just learning how to navigate through the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not final. Failure is not final. Failure is not final. It's not final. Mm -hmm. We have a record right here, a Bible, full of failure. That wasn't final. Yes. Peter, of all people, Discuss. Yes. I don't know that dude. <laughs> he gives the first message of the kingdom. Yeah. Huh? And at the end of his life, you know what? He said, you know what? God did such a perfect work in him. At the end of his life, they, when they got ready to crucify him, he, he told them, don't crucify me like my Lord. Sir. Turn me upside down. Yeah. God, the end of a thing is always better than the beginning. Yes. Yes. You're just in process. When you yes. touch by God, you recognize everything that's about you is working together for the good. Yes. You're in process. Yes. You need to be touched by God. That's when you're fully persuaded in your spirit. I won't be soon shaken in words, spirit, letter, or spirit. But you got to be honest. You got to be truthful. You got to be honest. You got to be truthful. Yeah. Could I give you a little nugget? If you really want to experience change, if you really want to come out of whatever you in, whatever you in, you got to find somebody that know much, know as much about you as the devil know about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So your secret is out. You want to find somebody who knows. I, I, I thank God. Come on. I had two men in my life that knew everything about me. My weaknesses and my strengths. Mm -hmm. Never put me on blast. I mean everything. Y'all yeah. yeah. <coughs> yeah. ain't got there yet. That's why you're still in that same state. Mm -hmm.